Greetings boys and girls. I hope you are doing great. Um, it has been pouring in Harare. I got rained today. Um, I know in other places it's cold because there is snow. In other places there are floods. Um, we just need to continue to ask God that you are all um, safe. Um, and for those in Zimbabwe or in other parts of the world, I hope you have started school well and the Lord continues to meet your needs. Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you for the opportunity to learn your word. Thank you for what we learned last week that we need to repent. And we pray for today and ask that you bless our time. Uh, King of Kings, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's just quickly talk about last week. Um, you remember Judah, uh, the southern kingdom, uh, which was made of Judah and Benjamin. Um, they obviously diso disobeyed the Lord. And that's why Joel, the book we are reading, started talking about that. So the country had locusts, destroying crops, fires and drought. And Joel, as a prophet of God, asked them to repent. We spoke, boys and girls, about the need that we also need to repent. We need to ask God to forgive us for the things we have done. I told you the seven steps of repenting that you admit that you have done wrong. You accept responsibility for your sins. Uh, you do it today. You don't keep putting it off saying, I'll do it when I'm older. I'll do it when I get home. No, no. Do it now. Do it today. We ask God through our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. And acknowledging that Jesus is the Lord of your life. That's important, boys and girls. Once you become a Christian, you've asked for forgiveness, um, repented of your sin, uh, Jesus becomes the Lord of your life. And also allowing the Holy Spirit to change you from inside to be more like Jesus. And then, obviously, going to tell others about Jesus. Today we are reading from Joel chapter 2 from verse 12 to, um, to chapter 3 at the end. But I'll just pick a few verses. Even now declares the, the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding, that means full of love. He relents from sending calamity. Last week, all those things we talked about, the locust is calamity. Who knows, he may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offering and drink offering for the Lord your God. Now, rend your hearts and not your garments, which you find in, in chapter 2 of Joel. Um, in Bible days, boys and girls, people expressed sorrow by tearing, that's a rendering their clothes. Everyone who saw them knew that they were grieving. If someone wanted to demonstrate their repentance and sorrow over their sin, they would publicly tear their clothes. Not like what you see in fashion today where people just um, tear their clothes. There's a fashion... Uh, I don't know what you guys call it, just fashion. Um, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what that is all about. But anyway, in verse 18 says, Then the Lord was jealous for his land and took pity on his people. The Lord replied to them, I'm sending you grain, new wine and olive oil, enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I, will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. This is when the children of Israel have repented. Look what the Lord is doing. Surely he has done great things. 
verse 21. Do not be a friend, land of Judah. Be glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Do not be afraid, you wild animals. For the pastures in the wilderness are becoming green. You remember last week before they had repented, the locusts were eating all that. The trees are bearing their fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their riches. There's a change now. The Lord is hearing them. The Lord is answering them because they have repented. Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you autumn rains because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers. Okay, like we are receiving in Zimbabwe. Both autumn and spring rains as before. The threshing floor will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. Now, because the children of Israel have repented, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts, the other locusts and the locust swarm, my great army that I'm, I sent among you, you will have plenty to eat until you are full. And you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you never again will my people be shamed afterwards i will pour out my spirit on all people your sons and daughters will prophesy your old men will dream dreams your young men will see vision even on my servants both men and women i'll pour out my spirit in those days verse 30 I will show wonders in heaven and on earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. Now, boys and girls, imagine you received bad news. How would you respond? Think about how the children of Israel must have felt when God was punishing them with all those locusts, the drought, and all sorts of things, and there was no grain because the locusts would have eaten. How did it end? They repented. And there was also a promise for a blessing and good news. God promises people that if they say sorry, that is to repent and come back to him, you'd bless them with many things. Their plants would grow. The rain would fall. The animals would be healthy. God promises us many blessings when we become part of his family and ask him to forgive us. Boys and girls, when you ask God to forgive you, when you repent, God does forgive you. And now some of the blessings that come is forgiveness of our sins. First John 1 verse 9, God's message, the Bible, so that we can know what is right and what is wrong. Psalm 119 verse 105, the fruit of the Spirit. God's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control shining through us. In Galatians 5, to 23. God's love to protect us when we are lonely or afraid. In Psalm 23, verse 4. Eternal life, we will live with God forever. That's a promise, boys and girls, that you receive when you become part of God's family. There is no sadness, no crying, no wrongs in heaven. It is a wonderful place where God has promised we will be with him forever. And you find that in John chapter 14, verse 3. Boys and girls, I don't want you to confuse these blessings uh, like many people mis misinterpret God's word with what today is called the prosperity teaching. Worldly wealth does not equal God's richest blessing. 
God's greatest desire for us is that we grow to be more and more like Jesus. And boys and girls, it's important for you to know that if you ask God to forgive you for the wrong things that you have done, like he did for the children of Israel, he can do it for you. And it comes with all the other blessings that I talked about. The people of Israel listened to the messenger who's Joel's warning. God showed them his amazing love and forgiveness. So we want to thank God that today he still loves and forgives when we say we are sorry. That Lord, I repent, I'm sorry I've done wrong things. So Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. I pray for every boy and girl. Lord, like you did for the children of Israel, we want to thank you that you forgive. You forgive every boy, every girl who comes to you and says, I'm sorry. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessings that come as we become part of the family. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.